You shall have no other gods before me. Welcome to episode 56 of Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. Today we'll be covering questions 268 through 273 in To Be a Christian and Anglican Catechism, the official catechism of the Anglican Church in North America. I'm Father Kurt Hine, Rector of Light of Christ Anglican Church in Georgetown, Texas, joined today by my co-catechist, Father Isaac Rayberg, Rector of All Saints Anglican Church in San Antonio, Texas. But before we begin, let's start with a prayer. This is prayer number 72 from the Occasional Prayers in the Prayer Book for Knowing and Loving God. O God, the light of the minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the wills that serve you, help us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may fully serve you, whom to serve is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. What is the first commandment? The first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Well, what does it mean, number 269? What does it mean that the Lord is your God? It means that I have faith that the God of the Bible is the only true God, and, I, and that I entrust myself to him wholly. W-H-O. L L Y, right? Entirely. Yeah. So this is this is what it means. It means that there's only one true God, in meaning there's only one true Creator of all things who sustains all things by by His Word. Um, and that and that and the corollary of that is because He is the one who created all things and sustains me by His Word that I trust Him mm -hmm. alone. And then that's what having faith. Uh, faith in him is, is trusting him, right? Absolutely. Yes, the thing we trust in, that is our God, right? The thing that we trust in most, that is what is functioning as a God. And we'll get more into that when we talk about the next commandment, idols. But uh, this is a call to faith in the one true God, the one who actually made all things. <laughs> 270, what does it mean to have no other gods? It means that there should be nothing in my life more important than God and obeying his will. I should worship him only and love, revere, and trust him above all else. Mm. I heard I heard something uh, not too long ago, um, a uh, pop star who um, I guess was flirting with some uh, problematic things sexually, and though she was supposedly from a Christian family, and her uh, her her uh, parents supported her, and she tells the interviewer, um, "Well, you know, my parents love me more than they love God." And uh, you can see the problem there, right? Yeah. What's the most important thing to you? And um, yeah, God needs to be be the even more important than our wives or husbands or children or anything, right? And this is the audacious claim that Jesus makes, right? Unless you're willing to leave father and mother, houses or lands, everything, to fo and follow me, you cannot be my disciple, he says. And so that only makes sense if Jesus is uh, God incarnate. Yeah. Because the only one that has that sort of absolute claim over us is the one who created us and sustains right. us. Um, any, anyone less than that does not have that sort of claim. And, and all of those other things are gifts from him mm. and, and they need to be treated as such, you know, they are the things that he's given us. And so to, to misuse the gifts, including those people in our lives that, that we should love um, to misuse them to the point where they're more important than God is to um, have a disordered love. Right. We should okay. love them, but that love needs to be an ordered love, not a disordered love. Right, right. If we do not love God most, we actually can't really see creation as his gift to us. That's right. And there is a sacramental quality that opens up in all of life when we have this understanding of God, because God made all things. And so all things that are express who he is in some way. 
And there's a great joy that's available to us if we understand all of these things as God's gifts. Because we get to understand the God who made us, who is calling us into relationship with him. And that's a, yeah. a wonderful way to experience life. That it's not just the beauty of the Grand Canyon, but it's it's a picture that that it's a it's a painting that God painted. Um, or your child is, is is the beauty of a of a child that that you love so much is a gift from God um, to you, and 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 you also a gift of God to yourself and to your and to your child. So there's a there's a beautiful mm -hmm. way of seeing life um, that opens up to you through through following this commandment. And uh, definitely, we should love more God god more than our uh, annoying dog in the background of this recording <laughs> hey man that's a problem with us it's, americans it's a... man we love our dogs don't we <laughs> i'm not against dogs but i don't know if they should be in baby carriages i'm not sure <laughs> a little much well 271 why are you tempted to worship other things instead of god I am tempted because my sinful heart seeks my own desires above all else and pursues those things which falsely promise to fulfill them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah dis disordered desires, disordered loves. Um, there's a right way to, 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 to love um, the gifts that God has given us. And there's a wrong way and um, the wrong way leads to, to worshiping them. Right. When we, when we look to the created things for the things that only God can give us, yeah. for making them an idol. And so we, we're starting to already see how the first commandment and the second commandment are very, very close. And that's why in the Catholic numbering, Roman Catholic numbering, the Lutheran numbering of the commandments, they actually, number one for them is both what we would call the first and second commandment. Right. Because they're so closely related. Um, when, we're, when we're pursuing absolute an absolute sense of security or joy, in anything other than God Himself, this is this is um, this is worshiping something other than God. You know, wh whether it's money, for example, I remember a story. Actually, Tim Keller tells this um, after uh, it was one of the stock market crashes where a lot of these traders on at on Wall Street were literally jumping out of buildings because everything that they had placed their life trust in. And, and joy and, and, and future and was gone instantly. So there was nothing, mm. no reason to live for them. So they were killing yeah. themselves. Um, one man came to him after that and said, I want to thank you for saving my life. Because had this happened uh, two years ago, before I walked in to, to church and, and um, heard of Jesus and started living for him and him being the most valuable thing in my life, I would have been jumping out the window too. Yeah, uh, and that really puts a point on it. Like the idols, these other things besides God will always let us down. Yeah, this this call like to worship God alone is for our good. Absolutely, absolutely. So two seventy two. How are you tempted to worship other gods? I am tempted to trust in myself, my pleasures, my possessions, my relationships, and my success, wrongly believing that they will bring me happiness, security, and meaning. I'm also tempted to believe superstitions and false religious claims and to reject God's call to worship him alone. I remember my Old Testament professor kind of uh, breaking down for us uh, modern and enlightened Americans the way that uh, pagan idolatry in the ancient world works. Um, and, you know, I, I use that with a little bit of sarcasm there. But, um, you know, the, the phrase he used was sympathetic magic and basically is when you do good for the idol it obligates the God to do good for you. Mm -hmm. And so it's a way to, um, to have control, to have security, success, meaning, and to keep it to, to, to have control over it in a, in a world that is very much not in our control. Right. And the same thing happens in, in modern times. We might not be using um, little idols and fetishes, but we are doing the same thing with our pleasures our possessions, our relationships, our success. Um, you know, why, why is it so difficult to uh, for the budget not to be made each month? Well, it's because it's robbing me my security. And I'm trusting in that money to, to, to keep me safe mm. or happy or whatever. And um, no, we need to trust in God regardless of the circumstances. 
right or the or the man or woman that sacrifices her family or the of the life of her um unborn child for the sake of uh career yeah um or or the the father that's always away from the family because of the sake of career he's making sacrifices because he believes that he in making those sacrifices to that god that the quid pro quo that god will give him what he's looking for right yeah. his recognition his honor is and all those things god put in us but it's 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 god we're meant to seek those things from god the honor that comes from him the security that comes from him and 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 uh, yeah so also um superstitions false religious claims man a lot of those yeah you know in, in in this part of the country it's still not uncommon for um you know pe people to uh bury a statue of saint joseph upside down in their yard when they want to sell a house you know there's these old superstitions um again that's not trusting in god right i mean you might say oh hey well this is this is a saint of the church how is that uh no that's still not trusting in god that's treating god as as in a superstitious way or his saints in a superstitious way and that's that's not that's not the way things are supposed to go or horoscopes or tarot cards Oh, and then and then all of this baloney about um, attraction, right? The secret, yeah, you know, secret, that sort of thing. yeah, and all of that stuff, which is what it falls into. This it false religious claims. We're, we're we're showing our uh, our our age, you know, bringing back twenty year old uh, superstitions. <laughs> well, those are still, I, I, there, yeah. There's like this new one called the attractor, and it's oh my gosh. It, anyway. It's still it's still strong. Um, it's hard to keep up with it all because yeah. because they all I mean the same the same lies come back in different guises all the time and again and again. And I I think yeah it's it's really important to um, understand the way God works versus the way that an idol works. Yeah. You know, for, with the idol, as you said, with that sort of sympathetic magic, it's always quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. the God you give the God something that it needs. So it so it gives something you need, <laughs> right? So it's transactional, but yeah. our relationship with God is not the true God is not like that. It can't be, right? Because yeah. the true God needs nothing, and He created us solely because of His love. And so when we enter into relationship with Him, it can't be transactional because there is there's nothing we can give Him. Yeah. Well, so, what does He say in the Psalms? You think I need bulls and goats? I have yeah. the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't need it. I don't need anything from you, he says, right? What he yeah. wants, what he wants is relationship. That's right. right? What, and relationship is based upon gift. And, and here's the secret. The gift. Yeah. He doesn't even need relationship from us because no. within the Trinity, he's already got relationship. He wants it you, because, because of love, because us. it's good for us. Right. It's I mean, that's the, that's, good. that's the tremendous thing. Yeah. Thanks for bringing yeah. that up. Yeah. So yeah. good. Yeah, God, God is not a needy girlfriend, a needy ex-girlfriend, not at all. You know, God, God, all of this is just because of how much he loves us. It's all grace. I right. think we said that at the end of last episode. It's all grace. And that is uh, that still we end the first commandment the same way. It's all grace. It's all grace. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to end it with 273. Can you worship and serve God perfectly? No. Only our Lord Jesus Christ worshiped and served God perfectly. But I can seek to imitate Christ, knowing that my worship and service are acceptable to God through him. Oh, that's that's so good, yeah. That's, yeah. It's because we're in Christ that we, you know, we scribble with our crayons on the pieces of paper with our lives, and we present them to our Heavenly Father. Because of this relationship he's given us for free. Yeah. And he looks at the scribbles and he says, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Thank you for joining us for Anglican Catechesis, where we're learning to follow Jesus on the Anglican way. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment below. You can also take Anglican Catechesis with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. You can find the link in the YouTube description. Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.